the prophets and the messengers of Allah, including the, the, all the prophets and all the messengers, starting Adam, Noah, Abraham, uh, Jacob, Moses, Isaac, Jesus, and till the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we praise Allah, we thank him, and we show the gratitude to Allah. We are thankful to him that he brought us to the masjid and he gave us the opportunity so we can sit together for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and to seek Allah's reward from that gathering. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala strengthen our Iman in our hearts and let us come together in Jannah as he brought us together in his masjid. Allahumma ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. And let's continue what we started yesterday. And Alhamdulillah, we had a great, a great zeal tonight. So we can ask and we can quiz my brothers and sisters who were there, uh, who were yesterday here in the masjid. And we were talking about the bid'ah. And let's just remind myself and yourselves as well with the topic and with the concept of the lecture. And Alhamdulillah, I think we have also my brothers and sisters here on Zoom. And I think we, uh, we have uh, um, Brother Muhammad Nasruddin, Bibi Hussein, Bibi Jameer, and Dr. Rahim, Dr. Siddiqui, mashallah. So we can quiz a large number of the brothers and sisters and you just write, write your answer if you know the question. We talked before about that we are souls has bodies. And the main concern is to feed the soul, not the body. That's number one. Number two, if you are going to, to feed your soul, you have enemy behind you wanting to attack you. Who is that enemy? Shaytan. As Allah said in Surah Fatr, and we have our Shaykh here, uh, Shaykh Zahib, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوُّ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوَّ The Shaytan is your enemy and consider it as your enemy. So that's an imperative mood from Allah. Don't say, no, 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 the Shaytan is not my enemy. No, Allah told you, اتَّخِذُوهُ Consider him as your enemy. That's the first point. Number two, number three, if I wanted to feed my soul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me the what? what? The curriculum. Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with the manual. That manual has the guidance, the instructions. So we can obey Allah according to that manual. And each nation has its own manual. So you have Torah, you have Injil, you have Quran. And as we mentioned, should we take from the other nations their Sharia or not? We agree, you remember? And what's the evidence for that? Do you remember the evidence? The Hadith of Rasulullah, what happened with Sayyidina Umar? Huh? Just remind me, Brother Ahsan, what he found him reading from? He was reading the Torah and he, he said, إِنَّهَا صَحَائِفُ مِنْ عِلْمِ مَنْ قَبْلَنَا نَزْدَادُ بِهَا عِلْمًا عَلَىٰ عِلْمِنَا That's a scripture that we are looking for and we can take some of their knowledge so we can add it to our knowledge. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what he told him, أَلْقِهَا يَا بِنَا الْخَطَّابِ Throw it away. أَمُتَّهَا وِيْكُونَ فِيهَا Are you in a doubt in my message? وَالَّذِي بَعَثَنِي بِالْحَقِّ I swear by Allah, the one who sent me with the truth. If my brother Moses is alive, he would follow me. That's Rasulullah Wasallam. But we should take what? From the prophets and the messengers. Not the Sharia, but we said something else. The Sunnah. I mean the morals, the acts, the ethics. As we took from Ibrahim السلام, the Udhiyah. The Udhiyah, we followed Ibrahim. Am I right? And not only this, we followed also Ibrahim in the generosity. When we show giant, uh, kindness and generosity, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when he got, got guests, came to his house, he slaughtered a calf and he brought the food to them. And Allah said, فَقَرَّبَهُ إِلَيْهِمْ That's sunnah. That's sunnah. It's to bring the food to your guest. And not only this, to make it close to him. You know? And encourage him to eat. Don't say, no, no, I'm following the American way, the American style. Take what you need and leave what you need. No, no, no. In Islam, Allah said that Abraham 
قربه إليهم فقال أنا تأكلون don't you eat don't you eat that's that's one of the etiquettes that we take from Ibrahim we take from Musa Musa عليه السلام his reliance on Allah his trust in Allah سبحانه وتعالى when his companion said إن لا مغرقون we are going to be demolished we are diminished we are destroyed قال كلا absolutely not إن مع يا ربي سيدين I have my Lord he is with me he will guide me that's the ethics the iman the science of the belief but when it comes to the sharia to the laws to the legislations we stick only with our sharia with the quran and the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then yesterday alhamdulillah we started chapter number 18 alhamdulillah we have reached to page number 144 in Riyadh al-Salihin and we mentioned that we to avoid disobeying Allah and his messenger you have to away to be aware from the bid'ah you have to be away from the bid'ah be away from the bid'ah itself and we defined bid'ah yesterday should anyone like you can give me or share the definition of bid'ah what's bid'ah Yes, the innovation, that is the linguistic meaning. Bid'a is to have something new. And the technical meaning, the shari meaning that which Hajj Wajdi mentioned, that if you invented something wasn't in Islam, something new, and the main statement which has no root in Islam. As I told you, imagine that we decided to have online donation. Is it bid'a? Why? Because it has root, which is sadaqa, Allahu Akbar. So the bid'ah, which is not contradicting the Quran and the Sunni. Someone, as I told you, what is the example that we give for the bad innovation? What, what we mentioned? If someone invented what? Nowadays? Salat what? Salat al Corona. okay? If someone tried to tell you, now we are in the middle of the coronavirus, we are in the middle of the pandemic, so let's have new salah, it is called Salat al Corona. That's bid'ah. That's bid'ah. So if you have to, to differentiate between what's bid'ah and what is sunnah, and uh, I wish, I think, alhamdulillah, we had some of the brothers and sisters here, they got this message yesterday. Sometimes you got you, you got this confusion. Imam, is there, is there any good bid'ah? Nice bid'ah. And we mentioned, the answer is yes and no. How could you? Yes and no. According to the linguistic meaning, the lughawi, yes, we could have good bid'ah. But according to the sharia, we cannot have good bid'ah because the word bid'ah is to, to create something new. That's the root in, in the Arabic language. That's why if you have someone creative, you call him mubda'ah. Mubda'ah. Someone is mubda'ah. He's creative. He is introducing something new. That's why Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, he said one day, ni'ma, the people said to him, ni'ma al-bid'ah hiya. That's a good bid'ah. But that is a linguistic meaning. The Arabs used to say good bid'ah. So imagine if we had a brother who came to the masjid and he said, you know what, instead of sitting here, I wish that we can move to the other side, move to the system speakers to the other side. Okay, he did something new in the masjid. So we can call it bid'ah. Yes, that's a linguistic meaning. It could have, but as a shari, sharia, in the sharia, in the Islamic laws, we cannot say new good bid'ah. No, because Rasulullah and that's the hadith, that's the evidence. He said, you remember? What's the evidence for that? Kullu bid'atin dalala. 
كل you know كل means every every bid'ah every innovation in Islam is a misguidance so we cannot as a as a sharia we cannot say that but we have something in the sharia called sunnah hasana not bid'ah sunnah hasana and the evidence for that is the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam narrated by bukhari and muslim when he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man sanna sunnatan hasanatan fi islam falahu ajruha wa ajru man amila biha ila yawm al-din whoever practiced or what's the term that we mentioned yesterday we said one word it's the exact meaning in english or in arabic sorry that in the exact translation whoever revived whoever revived a sunnah man ahya sunnah aada sunnah whoever revived a sunnah he will get the reward and he will get the reward for everyone will follow him till the day of judgment that's the that's the case and look at the opposite way if someone let me use that term if someone killed a sunni people were in the masjid mashallah they were good and they were following the sunnah of rasulullah someone came with a new bid'ah and he stopped practicing his sunnah he will get the sin for himself and for everyone will follow him till the day of judgment that's why be aware of every for of everything you try to create in any masjid why because you have to ask yourself is it sunnah or bid'ah if it is sunnah congratulations you made it everyone will come after you and follow your way your method you the man who revived the sunnah will get the set will get the reward even if he will be in his grave and that is something very unique you will never see in any doctrine in any religion except in islam that is what we call it sadaqatun allahu akbar you will never find this concept in any place except in islam the continuous charity the ongoing charity what does it mean imagine if dr yusuf for example found that there is something we are missing in the sunnah of rasulullah and he reminded us he revived the sunnah he gave us a wake up call then we started to establish this he will get the reward he will get the reward and that's the case the main concern and i know somebody and alhamdulillah he is sheikh in egypt you know he is giving he is teaching quran the only thing he teaches only al fatiha that's his mission he's in the masjid every child they bring him just to teach him al fatiha and what's after al fatiha no take him to another shit why because that person will recite al fatiha the rest of his life so he needs the reward he's so smart if you taught me if you taught me surah ibrahim surah al ra'd surah al nahl I may not use it. I may not recite Surah Al-Ra'd the rest of my life. But in Fatiha, I must do it every rak'ah. So he is so smart. That's why if you have a grand, a grandson, if you have a granddaughter, teach them. Teach. That's the ongoing charity for yourself. You may die at any time, and you are in your grave, and they are reciting the Fatiha. and masha allah your bank account still receiving funds that's the deposits you know that's the case and if somebody invented he had a new innovation inside the message let's say i will not mention names because you may you know get angry with me if if somebody said to the people of the message you know what we are not remembering allah in a good way let's remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what's your way what's your method brother i i believe after isha we can stand in circles 
okay? And we can run while we are remembering Allah and then jump to the, you know, to, to touch the, the ceiling and say certain words from his own mind. And that's to have the spiritual oxygen. If we did so, he will take the sins. He will, he will shoulder the sins. And if he died, or he left the masjid, or he left the country, everyone will follow him, will take the same. And not only this, let me go beyond this scene. Let me go more deeper. When you share a hadith, hadith from Rasulullah, when you say to people, Qala Rasulullah, the Prophet said, and it was a lie, and he did not say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you transferred, if you conveyed, if fabricated hadith, and Rasulullah didn't, didn't say it, you will get the sense. Even if you will die and everyone will share it, you will take part. You will take a share from that sin. That's, that's why be aware. Rasulullah said, that's, that, that hadith, and alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Azhar, ya Rabbil Alameen, and bless the Shaykh of Azhar, ya Rabbil. That hadith, they taught us this hadith in our early days. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, look at this word, Rasulullah said, be aware. Be aware, once you say Rasulullah said, you have to be sure that he said. He said, مَنْ كَذَبَ عَلَيَّ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَلْيَتَبَوَّأْ مَقْعَدَهُ مِنَ النَّارِ Whoever intentionally, purposely lied on my name, on behalf of me, or lied just saying this, that Rasulullah said that and he didn't say that, let him wait her, his place in the hellfire. Let him behold and waiting his place in the hellfire. So as we have companions and, and people, the Prophet promised them in Jannah, we have others. The Prophet promised them that they will be in the hellfire. He told them, wait, that's your place in the hellfire. Who, who, who said that? The one who lies to Rasulullah, the one who says statements that Rasulullah did not say. You know what? You know what's, why it is so dangerous? Because we take the hadith of Rasulullah as Sharia. As Sharia. That Allah said, He does not speak from his own vain desire, from his own mind. In huwa illa wahyun yuha. But it is a revelation from Allah was revealed to him. So if you said Rasulullah said, and he did not say, maybe someone will act according to your sayings. And you remember the story of the bird yesterday? The, the bird who takes a, a sip of water, then he has drops and each drop has one of the angels. Did these, the messages, that we have on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on Twitter, you know? And people would say to you, share it to 30 people. And if you didn't share it, the shaitan prevented you. You will be in the hellfire. Who told you? Did you sign a contract with Allah to tell me that I will be in the, I swear by Allah that I will not share it. That's my reaction every time, you know? Because they push you with fabricated ahadith and they have a plan behind this. Be aware. They wanted to destroy your relationship with the hadith of Rasulullah. Why? If you brought to me, I had many questions from our brothers here and sisters. Imam, is that authentic? No. Is that right? No. Is that authentic? No. If you found that you have 30 hadith, 40 hadith, and they are fabricated, you will lose the trust in the Sunnah of Rasulullah. 
day after day, day after day, you will say to yourself, you know what? I don't need to bother myself. So I don't need to ask myself that is that is sahih or fabricated. I will leave the sunnah altogether. I will leave the sunnah totally. That's the case. They wanted you step by step to lose the trust, the confidence in the hadith under this excuse. I don't know. So what's, what's the solution? Is to abandon the sunnah altogether and just go for the Quran. You remember al Quraniyun that I told you about? The Jama'ah, they call themselves al Quraniyun. We are stuck only with the Quran. So you will lose your religion. The religion will be like a habit, like, you know, a good time I can spend emotionally, spiritually, not, not haya, not your life, not your way of life. That's why. And they tried. They tried. And I was thinking to, to give a khutbah under this name. Could you turn the light off? Could you turn the light off? If you turn it, let me describe it. If you are, and Brother Ismail, mashallah, is driving too much. May Allah protect him. Allah, may me. Imagine if you are driving your car on a very dark, gloomy road at night. Could you turn the light off? What would happen? What would happen? Crash? Does crash? Accident? That's the same case. The Quran and the Sunnah is your light. If you decided to turn off the light of your life, you will do that crash. What's that crash? You will be in the hellfire. You will be astray. That's that, that's the case. Subhanallah. That's why Allah described, and here is our Sheikh, he can say the, the verses very well, better than me. Allah described the Quran as Nur. Do you know Nur? Light. Light. Whoever Allah did not give him a light, he will never have this light. That means you are in you in this life in a dark, gloomy road. You need light. What about if you decide it? But there is another thing. You may not decide, but you have others. The enemies of Islam, they wanted to turn the light of Islam off. You may say, Imam, I don't see so. If you don't see so, go back to the Quran. Allah told you, Yuriduna li yutafi'u nur Allah. Yuridun. Let me stop here. Let me pause a little bit. You know Yuridun, what does it mean? They want. He didn't say they wanted. No. They want. Yuridun. That's fi'l mudari. Present, simple, Tense. That is yuridun. They want and they will and they will not stop till the day of judgment. Yuridun. He could say, Aradu. They want it. No. Yuriduna. That's continuous. That's present simple tense. Yuriduna liyutufi'u. They wanted to turn the light of Allah, the light of Islam up. Wallahu mutim munuri. Allah will complete. Allah will let that light be for eternity. Even if they didn't want the disbelievers, even if the disbelievers didn't want, that's Allah and that's his decision. So be aware from anyone wanted to turn the light of Allah off or the light of Islam, the light of Quran, the light of Sunnah of Rasulullah, be aware of the sunnah and stick with the sunnah of Rasulullah and do not follow anyone wanted to spread any innovation. And let me tell you clearly, anyone, take it as a rule of thumb, anyone tell you anything in Islam and he does not have the evidence, the solid evidence, don't listen to him. That's clear. 
because that's your religion and you will be asked don't say oh allah they fooled me oh allah i didn't know no now you have all the facilities mashallah as i told you you have youtube you have the the imam google everywhere and if you failed with them you have the regular imam in the masjid 24 hours waiting for your questions so you have no excuse here even my words my words if you listen to me and you you feel you felt doubt say to me imam i need evidence give me evidence and if i didn't bring it don't don't listen to me don't listen to me that's the right imam shafi'i as i mentioned yesterday said وَيُعْرَفُ الرِّجَالُ بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يُعْرَفُ الْحَقُّ بِالْرِّجَالِ You know the real men from following or by following the truth, the evidence, and don't know the truth by following men. Follow the truth, follow the evidence, the solid evidence, whether they accept it or not. If you follow the evidence, you will finally you will, at the end of the day, you will meet with the real men when you follow the evidence. That's the case. Imam Shafi'i said, إذا رأيتم كلامي يعارض خلام الله ونبيه فضربوا به عرض الحالات. If you found my words against the book of Allah and his sunnah and the sunnah of Rasulullah, throw it away. That's Imam Shafi'i. So don't feel embarrassed to ask anybody about his, his dalil, his evidence, he has to bring it. Otherwise, we will not listen. We will not listen. So just, I will, I will stop here for the time. I don't need to spend too much time in, in this chapter, inshallah. We will talk tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thursday. Alhamdulillah, still we have tomorrow. And uh, with Riyadh al-Salihin. So inshallah, we will talk tomorrow about calling to the right way. What's the virtues of calling to the right way? Yes, ma'am. One question. Yes, ma'am. This way, I will pray now. Yes. Okay, and that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good question. Let me, let me say the question here so the brothers didn't get it, so they know what we are talking about. We are talking with the social distance in the masjid, due to the COVID-19. Is it bid'ah? Okay. According to the definition that we mentioned, it's not bid'ah. That's the short answer. What's the, what's the, the, the long answer? In Islam, we have the rule, it says, and that's the hadith. Here is the evidence, okay? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا ضرر ولا ضرار. Don't get harmed and don't cause harm. So that's the main rule in Islam. And according to the, the doctors and the guidelines, they told us if we did not have that social distance, someone get, will get infected. And in Islam, your life, your health has the priority even more than establishing salah in the masjid, in congregation. So that's what we call it in Islam, al-qiyas. Now we are measuring to pray in a congregation, shoulder to shoulder, and get infected, or to have the safety and have the social distance and preserve your life. Which one is better? Which one you will take? The later one, the second one, to preserve, to save lives. And the evidence for that, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, لا أن تهدم الكعبة لا أن تهدم الكعبة حجرا حجرا خير عند الله من إراقة دم مسلم if the, if the Kaaba will be destroyed, brick after brick, it's in the sight of Allah better than losing the soul of a Muslim. 
That's why. Don't cause harm, don't get harm. That's the rule that we give the fatwa. Of course, Rasulullah did not at his time, did not have COVID-19. Of course, Rasulullah did not pray with that way to have social distance. Yes, of course. But if Rasulullah was exist, he would give the same fatwa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because we are talking about the priority here is to preserve the soul, is to protect oneself, is to protect your health, or to pray shoulder to shoulder. No, at that case, and that's not only my opinion, all the assemblies, all the committees in, in, in Islamic world and if, or even in America, Anga issued the fatwa with that way. Ikna issued the fatwa with that way. Isna, sorry, Isna issued the fatwa with that way. The ifta in Egypt, the assembly in Egypt issued the fatwa with that way. In Saudi Arabia, they issued the fatwa with that way. And now you can see they did hajj with social distance. Hajj. They did it with social distance. That's why they reduced the number so they can put the plan ahead. <laughs> yes, and we have under the, the rule of necessity. And that's one of the rules also in Islam. If you are under necessity, so you can do some of, you can have some exceptions in your religion. And that's one of them, according to the necessity. May Allah protect all of us. I hope that I answered your question, inshallah. Zafullah khairan, inshallah, see you tomorrow. And let's make dua for everyone attending in the masjid. Let's make dua for everyone watching us, mashallah. I can see lots of people and brothers and sisters. We are missing you so much. Brother Faisal is here, Brother Mutia, Shaliza, Bibi, Chuan, and mashallah, we have uh, Dad Zaf and Sister Brenda, Violetta, Hasib, Nazim, and Bibi, and Noha, Yaya. Mashallah, we have also our sister uh, Maryam, mashallah, here from the actual uh, lecture. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her. Allahumma ameen, ya rabbal alameen. And uh, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts. And we have uh, also for brother Rizwan, Allah Akbar from uh, New York. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts. And Dr. Siddiqui, Dr. Rahim, let's make dua for everyone attended and everyone watching us on Facebook right now, on Zoom, may Allah accept our efforts, Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take this calamity away and may Allah open our doors for guidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our worship and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower all of us with his mercy. May Allah forgive our sins, the minor sins and the major sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all our steps to Jannah and for those. And may Allah grant all of us the intercession of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us all enter Jannah and for those. And let us all drink from al kawthar the river of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma wa fillana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabhid aqdamana. Allahumma tawaffana muslimin wa alhiqana bisalihin wa hshurna ya rabbana. في زمرة خير المرسلين اللهم ارفع عنا البلاء والوباء اللهم لا تدع لنا في هذا اليوم ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا وقضيتها ويسرتها رب العالمين اللهم بارك لنا في أولادنا وبارك لنا في زوجاتنا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وزوياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم انصر الإسلام وعيث المسلمين اللهم أعد للمسلمين مجدهم اللهم أعد للمسلمين عزهم اللهم ردنا إلى دينك مردا جميلا أقول قولي هذا وصف الله ولكم وصلي لهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله